Darwinism has been and still is the core dogma of authoritarianism and ethnic oppression worldwide. Again, from vaccine mandates, from the technocratic management of inoculation of the masses to abortion and the sanitizing of the snuffing out of growing defenseless preborn baby. Let's speak plainly here. What has Darwinism done for us? The brutal, bloody dismemberment of a little human being? Being championed as a fundamental right, relabeled as, as, as reproductive rights. It's access to health care. This is what evolutionary naturalism causes. This is what Darwin causes. The late Dr. Bernard Nathanson did thousands of abortions, thousands of these dismemberments. He was trained in the core doctrine of Darwinism. Human beings are just animals, no different. It's all chance. There is no real meaning. Therefore, dignity is just a social construct. But one day a thought hit him. What about the humanity of all this? Eight years of medical school. And it took him 20 years into his practice before he ever stopped to think. What about the humanity of all of this? Why do we take an oath to do no harm? What difference does it make if we do harm? Well, Dr. Nathanson was given eyes to see and he saw the truth. And by God's grace, he walked away from the clinic and became a pro-life activist. This was the 1980s. And science had progressed to the point where it was possible to see what was happening in the womb. You see, a doctor never really sees what he's doing. He inserts a tube, turns on a pump, and a pile of tissue is collected in a bag that's discarded. But in 1984, Dr. Nathanson decided that he wanted to see what was happening. So he asked a friend who was doing up to 20 abortions a day, do me a favor, next Saturday, when you're doing all these abortions, put an ultrasound on the mother and videotape it for me. He did. Later on, Dr. Nathanson was, was editing the footage for a documentary his friend, the doctor, the abortionist who had recorded the footage was present in the studio with him. And the sight of these images on the screen, the sight of his own work, this man was so affected that he quit the clinic, never did another abortion. Even Dr. Nathanson, who said upon watching these images for the first time, he said, though I had not done an abortion in five years, I was shaken to the very roots of my soul by what I saw. Dr. Nathanson turned that footage into the now famous film, The Silent Scream which had a major impact on the abortion debate of the 1980s. Dr. Nathanson isn't the only abortion provider to be affected by such images. Abby Johnson, the former manager of a Planned Parenthood clinic, became pro-life on the spot when she saw an ultrasound abortion of a 13-week-old preborn baby. She watched the baby being torn apart on the screen and in that instant realized how wrong she had been in supporting and promoting abortion. Joan Appleton, another abortion clinic worker, had a similar conversion when she saw an ultrasound guided abortion and saw the baby struggling to get away from the instruments. Why do we do these things? Why do we do these things? evolutionary naturalism. It is the ideology of your adversary, Satan. 
man's just an animal. There is no design. There is no meaning, no purpose to the universe or our lives. This is survival of the fittest. And those babies were just not big enough to fight back. And since they were a nuisance to a woman's career or an embarrassment to a young girl or a family's reputation, our society has decided that it's not a big deal. It's such not a big deal that we can do it a million times. We can kill a million babies every year. They're just clumps of tissue. If you believe that evolution is true and mankind is nothing more than a random mutation, who cares? People fighting for no fault divorce everywhere. People clamoring to the government to make it easier to break their vows of marriage. Vows they made to God to make it easier to renege on a lifetime commitment, to make it easier to break promises we make to each other before God, to make it easier to do that which God hates. People are clamoring for it. Culture progressing. Women becoming more autonomous, creating circumstances where young women are more vulnerable. And so we get Ted Bundy. The demoralization of society necessarily leads to the destabilization of it. When the desire for human autonomy is allowed to go unchecked, the result is always tragedy. Women's liberation, bodily autonomy, abortion, sexual freedom. Moral of the story is that the desire to glorify our feelings our personal desires and dreams apart from God's good design. When we separate science from theology can only lead to a sense of emptiness that can never be filled as well as pain, suffering, and sadness. The transgender movement to the insanity of grown men and very